Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. That is just a fact of life. Hey everyone, what's up? BQ here. I haven't uh, recorded anything here for the channel in quite some time. As you can imagine, during Bound for Glory season, things would get very busy, very difficult for me uh, around here on the channel. I was trying to pump out a lot of content and uh, was breaking records as far as uh, traffic and subscribers and all that good stuff. So thank you to everyone who was involved with that. But you'd be crazy to think that I'm not going to at least drop my thoughts on Bound for Glory. I know it's been a week later. It's been a week and a half later, as a matter of fact, and... You know, you've heard Adam and Roe talk about it, you've heard Kyle and Trent talk about it, and maybe we're beating you over the head with it a little bit, but this is my channel, damn it, and I want to quickly discuss my thoughts on Bound for Glory. If it's your first time here at the channel, this is the number one place to be for Impact Wrestling news, reviews, interviews, and more. So please consider subscribing and uh, give the video a thumbs up if you're feeling generous today. So as you can tell, there's some changes here on the channel. Adam and Roe are no longer reviewing Impact, and to be quite frank with you, they didn't want to do it anymore. They kind of wanted to graduate on to something else uh, with a little bit of a higher ceiling as far as they views and, uh, excuse me, the views and everything like that. So uh, now they do the Adam and Roe show, and that's been re going really, really well. Kyle and Trent have come on to review Impact. They've uh, reviewed Bound for Glory in the last episode of Impact, and we got some good feedback, and, and change is very difficult. I get that. But, you know, that's just the nature of the beast going through some changes here and, uh, you know, spicing things up a little bit. So roll with us, bear with us. And, you know, the one thing I could promise you is that we always try to make the necessary adjustments to make the shows and everything as enjoyable as possible. As for myself, what, we're, what the goal is to try to get a content schedule down to where basically, you know, Sunday night, the impact review is going to come out Monday night. The Rowan, the um, Adam and Rose show is going to come out. And then Tuesday, uh, I'm going to have a, a series of different things. You might get an interview from me with an Impact star. You might get uh, the B-side, which is my version of an Impact review that's that's uh, very quick, kind of like I'm going to do with Bound for Glory here. Or I have a new podcast coming out called Just Lounging, where I'm going to have uh, different podcast guests with me. Uh, I should say different hosts with me as guests, ones who cover Impact. And we're going to talk about a whatever topic we come up with. And it's going to be kind of a, a talk show type of thing. Back and forth discussing it. Uh, very, very similar to the Adam and Rose show. But uh, with BQ, baby. So uh, let me get into this real quick. Instead of babbling for about two and a half minutes, I do want to run down uh, what my thoughts were on Bound for Glory. I thought it was a solid show. Uh, I really give it a, between a 7.5 and an 8. And uh, when I say 7.5... I know that's like a C rating, but I, I don't view it that way. I just view it as like, hey, this was a solid but unspectacular show. You know what I mean? And But it's been that way with Bound for Glory the last few years, right? Slammiversary always seems to, to greatly outdo it. And even just the presentation of Bound for Glory. I mean, Ty didn't even have her smoke, you know? It just, uh, it was a good show. I really enjoyed it. I watched the whole thing with my kids. We just, we had a blast. But, you know, did it go to that next level, hit that next gear that I was really looking for? Uh, probably not. And that might have to do with fatigue towards the end of the year. Who really knows? But I did enjoy the show. There was, a, you know, some things I really enjoyed and some things that really drag, drug it down for me. I thought the opening tag team match, though, was excellent. You know, it's funny. Two, you know, last year, the year before, probably the year before that, Impact wasn't putting on anything that you that you're like, wow, this is match of the year stuff. They they just weren't. Now, I mean, it's it's every episode of Impact has a, a tremendous match on it. There's been you know damn near classics throughout the year. This opening match was really enjoyable for me because the crowd was so into it, and uh, Willie Mack is a great addition. I li I really love what Rich Swan is doing. I'm not totally sold on Matt Seidel and Ethan Page as a team yet, but if you've been following that story, Ethan Page wasn't the initial uh, partner. He wasn't the guy who was supposed to be paired with Matt Seidel. I don't know who it was supposed to be. I just know that that individual was injured. The backup plan was injured, and Ethan Page was basically the uh, option B. Or that's not right, op option C. <laughs> and he kind of he kind of came in. So I'm sure they'll find their groove here here pretty soon. Now, what I thought was a really big major low point of the show. Now, when I say, you know, it's a, it's an 8, 7.5, what brought it down for me was the Eli Drake Open Challenge. 
and people were expecting something really, really big here. But if you if you really think about the episodes of Impact, the Eli Drake Open Challenge was not presented as a big deal. It was presented as let's give him something to do. With that being said, I did think you know someone is going to come out. It was going to be you know something we were like oh, hell yeah, something we really popped for. James El- Ellsworth came down, and I can't state enough. It was a it was a major low point of the show. I know Joey Janela was the initial choice. They try to you know it's rumor they try to get low key. I heard that rumor was false, but I mean you couldn't get Amazing Red or someone to show up. Um, th- there had to be other options in there than than for Plan B to be like, oh shit, we got no one now. Let's get James Ellsworth. I thought he cut this promo that you know, maybe worked in WWE, but it completely tanked on Impact Wrestling. The fans didn't like it. They hated it. They booed him. Uh, you could tell he was getting uncomfortable because he was expecting a different reaction, and, and he really got crickets for the most part because, you know, the, the the current Impact audience doesn't want that shit, and they want better for Eli Drake. I think a lot of it was booing. This is what you're giving Eli Drake, someone that we all really enjoy and love. So really huge low point for me. And then bringing out Abyss at the end was was just, I love Abyss, but super overbooked. Um, you know, just made Eli Drake look weak. And at least he brought it up on the episode of Impact following that. But it, I just thought it made him look weak. It made it look like, hey, we're sacrificing Eli Drake to Abyss for a feel-good moment. Uh, just thought it was silly. Reminded me of last year when Abyss took on Grado and Rosemary unnecessarily came out and everything. So, yeah, huge low point. Tessa versus Taya, and you know I, I've taken a lot of pride in, in predicting that that was going to be the match for Bound for Glory, and uh, it happened. So I was really happy about that. I'm enjoying Taya more now as a babyface though, because as a heel, I just you know kind of had this Valley Girl thing going, cutting promos. Like it was, it was almost like trying to come off like a knockoff of Taryn Terrell speaking, but then physically she was supposed to basically be like Tessa Blanchard, you know. So I'm enjoying this. Uh, iteration of Taya a lot more and there was a couple parts of the match maybe a little clunky here and there but for the most part most part you know definitely one of the top knockouts matches in a long time and you know Taya's uh, moonsault and and everything dude th- this match was was really cool I look forward to watching this one again uh, the right person won but I hope that they can keep a feud going because the, I don't want Tessa to deal with what LAX dealt with and thank god they ran into that feud with the ogs to where you run through your opponent so quickly then you have nothing eddie edwards and moose this was a match i was looking forward to i love moose now i I, I, you don't understand i already love cross but cross and moose i think are just absolutely killing it this was my other low point for the show if you've uh on impact fan nation on facebook uh you know check us out if you're looking for the number one fan site or fan group for impact wrestling on facebook that's the uh, impact fan zone or excuse me, the Impact Fan Nation. Impact Fan Zone is also a great page for you to like. But I made a joke on there about the Eli Drake Open Challenge. I said, if Tommy Dreamer comes out, I'm done. I'm turning the TV off. And when he came out to join Eddie Edwards, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I get the story. I get the backstory. But it was so fucking safe. And if you go back to Redemption, my favorite match on the show was Eddie, Tommy, and Moose against uh, Sammy and OBE. That was my favorite match. At Slammiversary... Eddie versus Sammy, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Eddie versus Tommy Dreamer was my least favorite match on the show by far. And again, this was because I'm not even counting the open challenge. Again, this was my least favorite match. And that's crazy because Cross is my favorite motherfucker on the roster. And they did a tag match and it was just safe, man. That That's, you know, when Tommy took on Eddie last week or last month, uh, just their guard, I'm sorry, last pay-per-view at Slammiversary, the match was supposed to be hardcore, but it came off real gimmicky and safe and i thought i thought tommy coming out was so safe and if you know they te- they teased hey there's gonna be surprises at bound for glory the surprises were james El- ellsworth and tommy dreamer who, who was next ishimori you know what i'm saying um i thought they had a huge missed opportunity for uh davy richards to come out you know i know he said he's gonna return to wrestling in 2019 but what's the end of 2018 you know i would have even had freaking d'angelo williams come out as a surprise partner I mean, it would make sense. You know what I'm saying? But the Tommy Dreamer thing's just, uh, it's played out. There's nothing that Tommy can do at this point in his career that that gets me out of my seat. So those two matches were just the big low points for me. And because it was match two and three, it it sucked the the air out of my balloon a little bit. Now, after this, however, X-Division champion Brian Cage with Pentagon, Phoenix, 
versus Sammy Callahan and OVE. I will say I don't think this match was as good as I really expected, only because the, the cutter's becoming the new super kick. That's doing nothing for me anymore. That one spot they try to do uh, with that huge cutter, you know, that, that botched, um, I don't even know how you can hit that from that high. Like, I, I can't even see that move being successful in any way. But I will say I enjoyed it being, you know, the Lucha rules. I guess they called it the OBE rules. I like the format of the match. It was very fast-paced. And I really like the story that was told at the end. I had a good feeling. If you've heard Ro and I talk about this kind of when we've been reviewing Impact recently, we talked about a, a situation where Sammy Callahan would pin Brian Cage and with probably with the help of OBE, and it would be like a, a three-on-one type of affair. And this essentially was what happened. And it, uh, you know, Sammy's going to be challenging for the X Division title, and they built a really nice story and feud here. Sammy is continuing to. Uh, you know, involve himself in some really good feuds. And I just hope we're away from the six man versus, you know, the Lucha brothers thing. Like now focus on Brian cage, but uh, the match was a little spotty for me, but I, it was, it was really good. And I thought the, uh, the end was really good as well. OGs versus LAX in the concrete jungle death match. Now it sounds like I'm, I'm complaining about everything on the card. And I, I just, to be honest, I had little complaints about everything. That's what brought down the whole show for me. Um, from being really, really good to, you know, kind of a solid thing. But, you know, they, they took out Conan before the match. Probably could have guessed that was going to happen. I mean, not too long ago, last year, they took out Homicide before a match. You know, this is this is an angle they've uh, done before with these guys. But it, I kind of wonder why was Conan even in the match? Because when he came in, it just felt like the Abyss thing. It came out for this, this feel-good thing. I'm not going to lie, folks. Uh, this would have blown the roof off the place. I thought Diamante was going to come out as LAX's third partner when when Conan got taken out. Now I know that in Impact they have you know they they flirt with it, but they don't really do the intergender stuff. But if there's anyone who could do it, it's Diamante, and she'd been t- teasing on Twitter like, "Oh, you don't know what side I'm going to be on," and this and it's like the whole damn feud came and gone. It it's went it's gone, and where the hell's Diamante? You know, so you know maybe Diamante's not even in the company anymore. Lord, who Lord knows. Most of us, all of us, I would say, want to see her back. But I thought this was an opportunity, a very big missed opportunity to to bring her back, make the story make sense a little bit, and to come get LAX's back and do the damn match. Overall, I thought it was a dangerous match, <laughs> but uh, but good stuff. It had some some really good stuff in there, and LAX got the clean sweep. I'm glad that they really followed it up really nice on Impact, where you know. King was like, well, we get a, you know, the, the bosses whooped his ass. And I said, well, we get a piece of New York still, but we got to stay away from you guys. That's basically, to me, that's opening the door saying, hey, the OGs are still going to be a tag team here in Impact. We just can't mess with you guys. So let's see if that's what happens or they just get rid of the OGs completely. But King deserves to stay around. Ali in the Undead Realm. A lot of people found this, you know, corny or cheesy, or whatever. I fucking loved it, folks. Loved it. This was better than the final deletion ever was because the final deletion was a bunch of inside jokes between the Hardys. Like this, there was so much effort and passion put into this. And, you know, there's people say, oh, Allie's not a good actor. I don't see that. I think she's doing a really good job. I know for a fact she's taking acting classes right now. So she she cares. She cares a freaking great deal. That should mean something to us as fans. But I really thought the whole thing was excellent. Like aside from Kiera's clothes being different than when she was put in the casket uh, or the coffin, whatever it is, um, that was the only like really complaint, real complaint I had about it. But whether you thought it was cheesy or, cheesy or corny, the amount of effort put into this thing, the hours put into this thing, like you have to appreciate that. I don't see how you can't. And it was a great way of f- furthering the story without Ali taking a loss, without Sue Young taking a loss. How do we bring Rosemary back in? Because I had said before, Ali can't win this thing because Sue Young's real problem is Rosemary. So if Allie wins the match, well, what what does that leave for Rosemary? The scraps? But then if Sue Young wins, then we get Allie, uh, you know, continuing what, trying to avenge the the loss of her friend. I love how they followed it up, where she's she's almost teasing a heel turn, but she's she's acting like Sue Young now. And I've told people, I've said it a million times on the channel and on the podcast, be careful what you wish for because everyone wanted Cherry Bomb for a long time. And when she started becoming Cherry Bomb, people got bored of her. So you got to give props to Impact for for really adjusting on the fly and making these stories mean something and, and, and move because 
I mean, Lord knows you can turn on the biggest wrestling promotion in the world and none of the characters have changed in years. They just changed their, their gear or their hair, maybe their music, but the gimmicks are all exactly the fucking same. We should appreciate that as Impact fans. I was so into this, loved it. The main event of, of uh, Austin Aries versus Johnny Impact, talked about Austin and, and Johnny, already talked about all that on the channel, okay? Work, shoot, who knows? I just know that this main event was amazing, and you got to give Austin Aries props because this is two pay-per-views in a row where he made the freaking main event matter. He took a main event that nobody wanted to see, and it was one of the best matches on the card. This was probably the best match on the card for me. A lot of people like the knockouts match. This was the best match on the card for me. And the crowd was into it. It had a big fight feel. This is something I've talked about ad nauseum. You know, as, as far I did it last year all the time. Like, there's no big fight feels for the main event. And uh, it's almost like these motherfuckers listen to me sometimes. It's, it's crazy because it's almost like after I stopped talking about that, they approach the main event in a totally different way. And they take these matches that the... Like Moose versus Aries made no sense on paper. Johnny Impact versus Aries made no sense on paper. And they made it freaking matter. The match to me was outstanding. It was excellent. And it was crazy because I've always like, oh, man, I don't really want Johnny Impact to be champion. I was glad. I was happy he won. I was I was into it. it, it I was into the moment that had Ty out there. Like I was really into it, and I really want to see what he does as champion. Now I'm like, it, it, it got me invested in his title reign. So normally I talk about the main event first. I just kind of went in order of the show. But overall, Bound for Glory for me, pretty good show. I think Homecoming is going to be a freaking blast. I fully plan on being there, but I think that one's going to be a real blast. So thanks for listening, folks. Keep keep uh checking out the impact lounge we're trying some different things we're going to be doing more more podcasty stuff probably less vloggy stuff uh going to try to stay on top of the news a little bit more a little bit quicker but uh it's going to be a really good experience for you guys i promise and if you're listening on a streaming platform thank you for being here as always and uh keep listening keep checking us out Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling related content. This is the Impact Lounge.